I'm going to show you how I inlaid this custom logo using epoxy and my CNC. Let's get started. When Carhartt and I first talked about this project, we knew the Friends of Carhartt logo needed to be included. But the problem is, it has lots of tiny details. So after some brainstorming, I decided to try something I've never done before. Let's see how it goes. With the machine zeroed in the Z axis, I go ahead and start clearing out the bulk of the material. Here I'm using an eighth inch end mill. Uh, granted, this is a pretty small logo, so even though an eighth inch seems small, it's not near as small as this 23 thousandths end mill that I'm using to clean up the corners. Another little detail is that the inside surfaces of the heart that's being cut right now, I'm actually cutting those a little bit larger than the pattern calls for, and you'll see why here in a little bit. To fill in the different features of this logo, I'm using High Performance Epoxy by Total Boat, and I'm also using Mix All Pigments to get the right colors that I need. In an effort to keep this project as tidy as possible, I pour out the minimum amount of epoxy that I need, and I come back with my mixing stick and try to push it into the corners. And to get rid of the bubbles that will almost certainly show up, a heat gun is your best friend. Once the epoxy has fully cured, I send it for a few laps through the drum sander to clean everything up. For this next step on the CNC, I'm using that same 23 thousandths end mill to cut out all the details. And believe it or not, this took about an hour and a half to complete, so I went ahead and sped it up to save you the time. A little while ago, I said that I made the heart pattern just a little bit larger on the inside of the logo than what it actually needed to be. If you notice, while the CNC is cutting the bus for this logo, it's actually cutting just a little bit of the red from that heart, and that's intentional. I wanted to make sure that I had a really crisp transition in between these two different elements of the logo. Just to give you a little context, this is the cover for an electronics cavity on an electric guitar. So I'm pre-drilling for the screws that will hold this cover in place, and I'm also cutting out the profile of it. I didn't completely cut out the cover at this point because I still needed to do another epoxy pour and run this thing back through the drum sander. So I left the piece a little bit larger right now, and I just trimmed it up by hand at the very end. Back at the bench, I start mixing up the epoxy for the second color in this project, and as you see, we're going for blue. So I get started mixing it up and check it every now and then. That's just a little bit too light. So another drop and I think we're gonna be good to go. Yeah, that looks good. If you're new to working with epoxy or you've been using it for a long time, make sure to use my code woodshopmike at checkout over on totalboat.com to save 10% on your next order. After some delicate application and a little bit of amazing heat gun work on my part, I let the logo set for about 24 hours before I run it back through the drum sander to clean everything up. Next up, I apply some Rubio Monocoat Black to this electronics cover and I get it installed on the guitar. I don't know about y'all, but I think this is looking pretty awesome. If you want to see how I cut the Mother of Pearl inlay for this guitar headstock, I'm going to have a video out on that soon. And once it's ready, it's going to be right here for you to see. Now, if this is the first video that you've seen in the build series, make sure to check out that playlist right there. As always, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, let the sawdust fly and have fun making something.